Today's video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Reduce your ping time and get faster speeds when you game at expressvpn.com slash inside. Over the last two decades, motion capture has become the standard technique used for big budget films and video games to produce believable special effects and stunning character performance within an ever expanding world of digital entertainment. We've all seen the funny suits and the memes, but have you ever stopped to think about how motion capture actually works? Simply put, motion capture, or mocap for short, is the process by which the movements of a real world actor or subject are captured in a way that allows special effects artists and animators to implement those realistic movements in a film or video game. There are actually a few different motion capture techniques that have been developed over the years. The more commonly used or classic method most of us are used to seeing with the suits and all those funny little balls is referred to as a passive marker system. Those balls are actually tiny little reflectors that bounce infrared light back to special cameras set up all around a motion capture studio. Tens or sometimes even hundreds of cameras are used to both project and receive infrared light as a means to track the balls. Modern advancements in performance capture technology has led to an active marker system where those balls are replaced with LEDs or special emitters that produce their own light instead of just reflecting light back. This allows for better tracking and for performers to be further away from the cameras. Either way, performers wearing their special suits are then recorded going through all of their scenes with sets and props that approximate the digital world their character will be inhabiting as best as possible. Special software is then used to analyze the collective footage, determine the distance between all the markers, and then basically generate a type of skeleton, as well as the spatial and movement data that animators can then import into their 3D modeling or animation software. Simple enough. Enough, right? Well, actually, mocapping a performance is only one small step towards getting realistic motions and performances into a game. Once a performance is captured, directors and 3D animators now have to painstakingly go through all the takes to select the best ones, and then a cleanup process begins. See, the reason so many cameras are used for this type of motion capture is because if you lose track of one of those markers somehow, or the software that measures them accidentally swaps two of them, or they just get a little jittery, it could cause some big problems down the road. So any weirdness or artifacts get cleaned up, and then the animation data, or the bones if you will, has to be attached properly to their respective character models. Once the bones are properly bound, animators have to make sure that there aren't any conflicts with the performance and the actual character model. If a character in a game has a big hat or inhuman features or maybe some bulky accessories, the motion capture performance could unintentionally clip through those assets in an undesired way. They also have to complete a process called skinning, which involves weighting a series of vertexes so that when a character moves, all of their skin and clothes animate properly as well. We're skipping a few things in the interest of time, but once all of that is done, the whole thing can then be dumped into a game engine or 3D environment to be used. But there are still a number of issues that can crop up. For example, characters in game heights have to be accounted for during performance capture, or a given character's head position and eye line might have to be readjusted in every single frame. Speaking of eye lines, we haven't addressed facial capture yet. While a little more complicated, a similar marker technique is used to track multiple points on the face with a high resolution camera. In the past, facial capture along with the VO would be done separately, but now you'll see modern motion motion capture artists have headgear with camera mounts and microphones that capture their facial expressions in real time with the rest of their performance. What's really fascinating now is all of this motion data can be streamed into game engines like Unreal. This provides an immediate reference for the director and any crew members on the set, as well as provide vital context for any developers back at the studio working on the scene. There are a few other really cool advancements in motion capture technology as well. A relatively newer and cheaper method of motion capture called an inertial system uses special sensors called IMUs instead of markers and cameras. IMUs, or internal measurement units, combine a gyroscope, magnetometer, and accelerometer to measure movement. Then, the movement data is wirelessly streamed to a computer nearby, where it can be recorded. However, while somewhere between $12,000 and $30,000 for an inertial-based system may not seem cheap, it is much cheaper than active or passive marker systems where you'd have to pay for a specialized studio space, 50 infrared cameras, and let's not forget about all the staff and crew to set up and run everything. Advancements in inertial tracking are exactly what have allowed VTubing and Twitch streamers like CodeMiko to really take off. It's really good for smaller game developers too, who may have only one or two animators. Markerless capture technology for facial animations has also come a long way. The tools in Apple's AR kit, which power Memojis, are now being used by studios like Kite and Lightning to great effect. For better or for worse. These babies are kind of creeping me out a little bit. In short, this type of capture uses a special depth detecting camera to mark and detect the shapes in your face, which can then be mapped onto a character model. Developers could take this a bit further by manually training their models and adjusting key points to map to an actor's face more accurately. For 
from games like The Last of Us and God of War to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's pretty wild to think about how far things have come. And as motion capture technology continues to improve and become more accessible, we are sure to see even more creative and impressive uses for it. In the meantime, let us know in the comments if you have a memorable or favorite performance from a game or a movie that was created using motion capture. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.